you're watching this video because you want to see the best and worst five neighborhoods here in Upland. Stay to the end because the last neighborhood that I go over may shock you and it may help you make a decision on whether or not Upland is even the right town for you. One of the neighborhoods you could pick if you want to live out here is by downtown Upland. And there's a bunch of great homes that are around here. So in downtown Upland, you have a lot of craftsman's homes, a lot of starter homes. They're a little bit smaller than I would say the, on the average size. So the average size we're going to see when we go up to the next one. Um, but one of the problems with living in downtown Upland is that those homes are like 100 years old. So maintaining them is pretty tough. I live in about, my house is like over 100 years old and there's always a problem that I have to fix, shift things, things like that. Uh, so you have these cool, unique homes. You are close to downtown, which have a lot of farmer markets. They close off these, uh, on Saturdays, they close off the downtown area for farmer's markets, stuff like that. So down here in downtown, you also have a lot of sh like uh, mom and pop shops, restaurants, cafes, little vintage shops, beauty salons, uh, barber shops. So you can, w if you live close enough, you can walk down here. Um, close by here also is the Metrolink. So if you want to go down to LA, you jump on the Metrolink, it comes about like every half hour or an hour, depending on the time of day. And in about an hour, you get to Union Station in downtown. Now, the only negative I would say about living down here is you might outgrow these starter homes. So you might find a, you know, uh, in certain, if you're just buying your first home, a three bedroom, two bath would be in the lower end, if like in this town of Upland, and you might outgrow it soon enough, right? I did a video on what it's like to live in downtown Upland. I go a lot more in depth. And so if you really wanna see what it's like, then go ahead and check out that video after you watch this one. So in my opinion, one of the worst neighborhoods you could probably move into is that's right, right next to the train station, right next to any railroad tracks, actually. I mean, uh, you got these beautiful homes right behind me. That community has to listen to the train honk its horn every morning, every hour, starting like at 5 a.m going all the way up to like 10 o'clock at night. You get the rumblings, you know, you have these train tracks. I mean, there's this giant locomotive flying by, you know, um, yeah, I, just, I have a three-year-old, he runs out, man, that would freak me out. So in your home search, if you're looking for a neighborhood, maybe you stay away from railroad tracks. Here's the other thing, because of this noise, what do you do? I mean, you live in this, you know, like the, the units behind me, so, if you do happen to live near railroad tracks or you're like, hey, that's not a big deal, then maybe you just upgrade your windows, right? And put some like sound barrier windows. Um, it's, you have a few options, I guess. So this train runs across Upland. So in this neighborhood, which is also close to downtown, keep in mind, along this route, you might not wanna, you know, be so close by to it. Just keep in mind that if you happen to live out here and next to these railroad tracks, then man, you're gonna have to, uh, Get used to that train. All right, so another neighborhood we're gonna go over, where I'm at right now, are these newer communities. What, is, what are these? They're bigger homes, slab foundation. They're not 100 years old on those raised foundations. They have like tile roofs. They're easier to maintain, more suburban feel. This one is in a HOA. They're larger, two car garage. You have your front yard, you have your backyard. You have space around your neighborhoods, you, uh, around your neighbors. It's a lot quieter. So a lot of people move into those downtown ones that we saw that are a little bit smaller. Their, their life, their family grows a little bit and then they relocate and move up to one of these larger homes, 2,000 square feet, 3,000 square feet. The only issue is since it's a move up home, it's a little bit more expensive, right? It's not one of those like starter homes. This I would say is like a move up level, right? Bigger home, uh, tile roofs, which means less maintenance. So what are some of the negatives? All the homes kind of look the same. They're all like mirror images of each other. Same color, beige and light gray. Uh, not a lot of personality, not enough like a, it's not a lot of craftsmanship like you would see in those older homes. Nothing too unique. Now the interiors are all unique because the owners get to make uh, those type of changes, but the exteriors kind of all look the same if you think about it. Also, you're not really walking distance to any shopping and events, so everything is driving. Jump in your car, drive. Wherever you're going, drive. Someone's driving you. Really can't, you can walk the neighborhood, but you're not walking to the store. Uh, this particular neighborhood that I'm in, 
it's pretty close to like uh, other shopping centers like targets and things like that so you have those type of shops those corporate national chain stores pretty close two minutes away um, so if you need like to go to the home depot or to target then that's pretty close by so that's good jump on the highway the 210 shoot out to pasadena or go out to uh, up the mountain so that's pretty cool so these are this is one of the neighborhoods that you might consider if you need to move up so another neighborhood you're going to consider are the foothill communities that's where you're going to find these like one million two million three million dollar homes big four thousand square feet new remodeled this also puts you closer to the foothills which means closer to bear mountain closer to lake arrowhead closer to mount baldy thing to consider is that you're going to be closer to the foothills closer to the mountains wildfires your insurance is going to go up in fact i've sold homes close to the foothills that insurance companies do not want to insure so they have to go to like state insurance which cost them a few more dollars um awesome views that's something you're going to have here that you're not going to find anywhere else are these killer views of the valley so that's what a lot of people pay for when they move up here the views giant homes single level big yards horse property definitely going to want to consider this one so here it is i'm going to say probably the worst neighborhood you could live in it's got to be living right next to a highway right across the street big reasons are air pollution noise pollution i mean can you imagine imagine you want to walk in your backyard and all you hear is this stuff man that's got to be tough on top of that air pollution Flo being close to highways and living there messes up your breathing i mean look you got big rigs you got cars all that exhaust what do you do right i mean uh it's a it's pretty tough and yeah they put these walls to like uh kind of dampen the noise but you hear it and these homes back here man they look awesome great huge multi like three car garage four car garage uh single level which is great but boy do you got to deal with this uh, highway headache so if you're thinking of moving to upland and you want to know what's the best neighborhood for you go ahead and give me a call i look out for your best interest i'm a real estate broker here in the area Text, email i'm here